All right, guys. Well, hey, I just want to welcome everybody here. I hope everyone is safe and healthy. Um, a lot of uncertainty in the world right now and uh, a lot to deal with, a lot of new realities at work and at home. And, you know, our primary responsibility is the health and safety and well-being of our team, our staff, and, um, you know, our family. So, um, and we're taking the necessary steps to protect uh, all those folks the best we can, and uh, hopefully our fans uh, are going to be safe as well. Um, these are very, you know, challenging times. We've never had to deal with anything like this before, at least in my lifetime. Um, and, you know, there's a global effort to slow the spread of this virus, and, you know, all of us have to be responsible in the decisions that we make based on, you know, what our responsibility is to do just that. Um, you know, the, the, the team is, um, you know, we're trying to stay engaged uh, in every way that we can, you know, with our team. Um, you know, the technology that we have now with Zooming and things like that, video conferences with the staff uh, and players um, can help us monitor their well-being, number one, and their health and safety, number two, their schoolwork uh, and the academic portion of it. Uh, which is being done online, uh, as well as, you know, we're allowed to uh, have two hours a week of some kind of, you know, football-related type stuff, which, um, you know, we're doing small increments of teaching segments, you know, with our players and uh, any other things that we had going on, like we had a leadership seminar going on, we're continuing to do that online. So we're trying to provide as much support, you know, to, um, you know, whether it's academic, medical care, mental health, wellness, nutrition, you know, whatever their need, our players and staff's needs are. Um, you know, I, I never really answer hypothetical questions, and, you know, I'm sure that everybody's going to want me to speculate on what's going to happen in the future, and uh, nobody really knows. So it's very uncertain. Uh, it's uncertain times. I think we have to, you know, fight through the process of what we need to do on a day-to-day -day basis uh, to make good choices and decisions to do the right thing at the right right time, regardless of the circumstance. And you know, think about what's ahead of us, what the future is, what we want to happen. Got to do the things, you know, correctly today so that we have the best chance to get the outcome that we want in the future. And I think that's everybody's responsibility. And I know we've got a lot of good people out there, um, health care folks that I'd like to thank, and, uh, you know, people who are uh, still having to work and do things that uh, they're providing a lot of safety and health care for a lot of people, and we certainly appreciate that. Uh, hey, Coach, this is Charlie Potter with Fan Online. Um, I was just wondering if we could get a quick update on Markel Benton's status. Uh, Markel Benton was suspended from the team. Uh, that was um, released earlier, and that hasn't really changed. Yeah, Nick, this is Alex Bynes with the Montgomery Advertiser. Uh, thanks for doing this. Um, I was just kind of curious. You, you talked about the instruction you're doing with the players, but... What is a normal day like for you right now? And, you know, how strange is it to be going through this at this point? Well, you know, I think the whole world turned upside down, so it's a little bit different for everybody. But I think the best thing we can do is adapt and adjust to it the best we can. Um, you know, basically there's two areas, really three areas that we're trying to focus on is uh, every morning I have a Zoom staff meeting at 730, just like we always do. Uh, it's done on Zoom, so there's, you know, everybody, no, 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 there's no personal contact with anybody. Um, so, and we discuss, you know, basically what we're going to do with our team and our players, you know, that particular day. Um, you know, we, we are, we usually use the morning to sort of work on next year's opponents, which is not to typically be doing at this time of year when spring practice is going on. Um, and in the afternoon, we uh, try to do as much as we can to stay in contact with um, recruits. You uh, are muted. I'm, uh, you 
each day at a time certain. You know, we have not each day. On Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, uh, right now we're doing, um, you know, sessions with our players. Uh, and then, you know, I do video conferences and phone calls with recruits, you know, then in the afternoon. So now that's pretty much what a day is like. Um, and we're doing the best we can. So we'll continue to Sure, Coach. Uh, how much can you really get done during a two-hour video session, and how do you really approach those with your staff? And then also, um, how much of a benefit it, is it that there wasn't as much turnover in the staff this year as there has been maybe the last two years? Yeah. Well, you know, we're not in re- any real hurry with uh, whatever installations we're doing with the players. Uh, I think, you know, basically there's three parts to teaching – you know, what to do, how to do it, why it's important to do it that way. So if we just take a single concept, like, for example, if we're on offense and we're teaching inside zone, all right, well, we could take 30 minutes on, you know, teaching the techniques, the aiming points, the footwork, uh, and then, you know, actually show the players video of doing it correctly or actually let them evaluate whether the guy that we're looking at is doing it correctly or incorrectly and, um, I, I think conceptually, you know, it's there, there, there's a lot of benefit, you know, to it uh, because we don't have to hurry through it uh, because we're going through this install and then we're going to go practice, you know, in a half hour. So we got 30 minutes to meet and we got to go on the field and we got to be able to go do this today. Um, I, I do think it gives the players the opportunity to be engaged, number one. But number two, I do think it's uh, – it's a slow process of learning that can be beneficial to them having a better understanding of concepts. So uh, we're not in any hurry. I mean, we're, we're so we're kind of taking it slow, and you know, so far it's 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 worked out, you know, really really well. Um, I think, you know, look, we we have good continuity with our staff, which is you know, a positive, but on the other hand, we've always been able to improvise and do things that we need to do. Uh, I actually think the addition of the strength and conditioning coaches that we have now has been a huge positive for us because, um, you know, we're, we're building a new sports science center. These guys, you know, Dr. Ray has actually got a PhD. So, you know, his knowledge and experience and uh, a lot of technical type testing and stuff that you can do with players and the new training programs that we're doing have, you know, the players have really liked and uh, hopefully this will help us with some injury prevention and, um, you know, help us be able to perform better when the time comes. So, uh, and they were very instrumental in, you know, setting up this whole, you know, program of what we're doing with the players in terms of, you know, Apple watches for their workouts, uh, you know, apps on their phones for weight training programs. Um, and we had issues with some players not having a place to work out because high schools are closed. And um, so, you know, we put them on band workout programs. So, you know, it, 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 they, they've done a really, really good job of managing this to this point, and uh, the players have done a good job responding to it. Okay, this is Cecil Um I was just curious, you, you placed such an emphasis during the spring and, and in general on competition, making players better, and I was just curious, what, what kind of window um, would you need for conditioning, competition, those kind of things before you could say we're ready to play? Not a hypothetical on when that would be, but just on how long would that be? Well, I, you know, I really can't say that. You know, obviously we have 14 practices in the spring, not counting A-Day, which makes 15, um, which is not going to happen. So, um, you know, if there was some kind of way that we could have 14 days of teaching with our players sometime before fall camp um, happens, uh, I think that would probably be beneficial. Uh, you know, historically we're not allowed to work with our players in the summertime and this would be hypothetical that at some point in time in the summer we, we would have the players back here and we would be able to work with them. So, you know, uh, and I'm not talking about, you know, having pads on or anything, but just be able to teach, you know, t- 
teach system, teach scheme. Um, you know, we'll have to evaluate the players based on, you know, fall camp. And I think, you know, the players who benefit the most from spring practice and, you know, having these. This um, meeting is being recorded. Are, are really the uh, young players on the team. So, you know, hopefully, you know, this, 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 this will work out that we'll be able to have some time to be able to teach them and we'll just have to evaluate them in fall camp. Thank you, Coach. You are unmuted. <clears throat> hey, Nick, it's Chris Lowe. How are you, man? Good, Chris. How are you? I want to ask you, you know, when you do get the kids back on campus, whenever that is, from your experience in football, what are the biggest challenges – when you have a long break, whether it's a kid coming back from injury or getting a team ready to physically get ready to play, when you haven't had contact or any kind of physical contact for a long time, what what are the biggest challenges along those lines? Well, I, I don't really, you know, maybe I'm a little different on this, but, you know, I don't think any of the uh, actual contact that you have in the spring I mean, I think the technique and the thing that you teach, you know, whether it's tackling, block protection, footwork, hand placement for offensive linemen, you know, pass protection, blocking for running backs, whatever it might be, perimeter blocking for receivers, block protection for DBs. I, I think, you know, the how to do it, uh, the why it's important to do it that way, uh, probably has a lot of carryover. That's why we do it. I don't think the actual contact that you have in the spring prepares somebody to have contact in the fall. I think that's why you have fall camp. Um, that's why I'm hopeful that we'll be able to do some kind of teaching sessions on the field, even if it's in shorts and T-shirts, you know, in summertime with our players, um, that at least from a knowledge and experience standpoint, um, we'll be able to um, benefit their growth and development uh, so that they're more ready when contact actually comes in fall camp. I don't personally think that making fall camp longer is going to get anybody any more ready to play. Uh, I think um, if you look at... You are muted. Statistics historically on concussions, injuries, uh, the most concentrated time uh, that you practice and not play is in fall camp. Um, you have more practices, you have to spend more time on the field. Um, so I don't know that increasing that is actually going to be beneficial and helping people get ready to play. I think if you could do, you know, simulated training programs in the summertime, uh, that wouldn't even involve that much contact or any contact, uh, would be just as beneficial at that point. Uh, Nick, Nick, this is Dennis Dodd from CBS Sports. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Uh, yeah, how are you? And uh, hope things are going well. Um, uh, you you sure came up with a system. Yeah, good. You came up at a time that a lot of coaches did when when all the soft stuff conditioning wasn't you know wasn't even done. You started up in August or whenever at fall camp. Do you, in the future, do you think this like that might be a reason to cut back just the whole year round culture of college football, or is that yet to be determined? Well, I, I don't think it's totally correct that, you know, even when I played, which was, yeah. you know, many, many moons ago, um, you know, we did, we, we had spring practice. We did off-season yeah. program. We, we did everything the players do now. Uh, the summertime, the difference in the summertime was is everybody didn't go to summer school back in those days. I, but, you know, I played for Don James, and, you know, we had a postcard of a workout that we were given for every week in the summer that we were supposed to do at home. All right, so that involved weight training, conditioning, uh, and some kind of simulated training relative to your position. And you had to fill that out, send it in every week. And then when we came back, the first thing we did is we had a physical training test. I mean, anybody that played in the old days know we used to run the mile run. We used to have two mile runs. We ran 16 110s. We did... Springfield test, which was run in 1040s with 15 seconds rest in between, and uh, your conditioning level was measured by how much your time sort of, you know, decreased uh, as you got tired. All right, so 
we've always had the same year-round approach. Um, you know, the only difference is is when we were able to put guys uh, on scholarship in the summertime, uh, and we had all the players here in the summertime. The or the organization of the summer workouts were done, you know, internally here by the strength and conditioning staff, and you didn't do it at home you know, at your high school or your high school field or wherever. So, um, I, I, I don't, I don't, I don't think the workload changed. I think the format changed a little bit. Uh, and I do think that players being able to go to summer school has enhanced to a large degree graduation rate, how quickly guys can graduate, how they can get ahead academically. I think that's been a huge positive. Um, and, um, you know, it's, they're able to do supervised workouts by the strength and conditioning staff in the summertime now rather than, you know, me running on the railroad tracks back in West Virginia. Nick, this is Mike Rodak with AL.com. Just what has been your reaction to the Tua's recovery to this point? Um, obviously, it's still only four or five months away from the injury and the initial shock of that injury. Now he says he's 100%. And also, what would be your advice to NFL teams who might be uh, concerned about his health still at this point? Well, you know, I'm not a doctor, so um, and I, I can't comment on, you know, where Tua is and what he's doing. You know, we, he's not, but we have continued to try to do everything that we can from a rehab standpoint. And, you know, I think his agents and his representation now have kind of uh, are determining what the factors are. Um, I think anybody that was going to have a medical recheck, you know, after the combine, uh, which usually happens about the first week in April before the draft, should probably, you know, go to their physician and do a medical check. And um, I certainly recommend that to our players uh, that had rechecks coming up uh, so and send them to all the teams. So, uh, and that's about all you can do right now. And, uh, you know, I, I, I can't really comment on where Tua is uh, based on, uh, you know, we think his rehab has gone extremely well. Uh, he's been able to do things um, on a, a schedule relative to the way we all thought that he would be able to do them. And he's very positive and upbeat on, you know, where he is right now. And, you know, that's really about uh, all there is for me to say about that. Hey, Coach Michael Cusgrandy from AL.com. Um, I just know that after the 2011 uh Tornado, you're pretty involved with the community. Just what, how do you do your role right now in boosting uh, public morale in this, in this time of crisis? Well, I've, I've done several public service announcements. I'm going to do a couple more today. Um, you know, we made a pretty significant contribution to food banks in Tuscaloosa, Birmingham, and Montgomery, as well as the 211 program. Uh, where people have the opportunity, it's like 911, but if you have issues uh, with whether it's food or whatever, uh, you can call these numbers and seek help. Uh, uh, so we made a significant contribution to uh, all those things, and you know we'll continue to try to help wherever we can. And um, I'm just trying to encourage people to, um, you know do what they need to do and be responsible in terms of social distancing, staying at home whenever possible. Uh, if you do have a job that you, um, you know, need to go to because, um, uh, you know, practice, you know, the health and safety and, you know, certainly have a great appreciation for, you know, those on the front line and the healthcare system, you know, trying to fight this disease off. So, um, we, we, we make pretty significant contributions to try to help people in the community. Good morning, Coach. This is James Ogletree with the Crimson White. Uh, I, I heard you address your kind of daily routine with the players in the meetings earlier, but uh, I was just kind of curious, have, have there been any changes that you've had to make to accommodate anything, or is your schedule the same as it otherwise would have been? Talking about me personally? Uh, just you or the team. Well, I think everybody's changed. Um, first of all, if nothing changed, we would all be here having practice today. Um, and I'm the only one here having this press conference because nobody's allowed in the building. And, um, 
you know, we're, we're doing a lot of things different. I think I explained how we're doing all those things differently, um, you know, earlier when I sort of gave you the day-to-day update. And I'm sure things are very different for just about everyone, you know, out there uh, in terms of what you can do, how you can do it, whether you have to work from home. Um, you know, so th- this is a very uncertain time for a lot of people. Uh, it creates a lot of anxiety, but what we've tried to emphasize to people is, you know, not to worry, but to try to make good choices and decisions about what you do so you can stay safe and, um, you know, just hope and pray that uh, we can move out the other end of this uh, sometime in the very near future. Uh, hey, Coach, Tony from Bama Insider again. Just uh, with the, the shorter evaluation period, uh do you have to te- to lean more on veterans early, uh, just just moving forward? Uh, I I can't say that. I mean, the host of us, will be we're, we're informed that you would like to speak. Who are the most responsible to go out and do their job and be able to create value for themselves because they're competent and understand? Uh, that could be a freshman. We played a lot of freshmen around here. I think we played nineteen last year and five started. I know they're not. Some of them are not going to have the benefit of going through spring practice, but we've had a lot of guys that came in in the fall. Minka, Ronnie Harrison. I mean, we've had guys that they weren't here in the spring. They didn't come in at mid-year, and they started as freshmen. So I, I don't think making those kinds of choices, decisions, whatever you want, without having some legitimate information to evaluate from, uh, that kind of speculation is, you know, I, I don't think it's. We're not going to do it, and I don't think it's smart for anybody to do. 